Hello, hi, this is Park Madden from the Weather Store in Sandwich, Massachusetts. Uh, today, I want to do a video talking about how to read or use a barometer. It's one of the most frequent questions I have when people come into the store. They, they simply say, well, explain to me what exactly is a barometer? Well, uh, maybe a good way to put it is that a barometer simply measures air pressure. It can tell the difference between high pressure and low pressure. And the difference in that really dictates what the weather is. So for example, high pressure tends to be clear, cool, dry uh, weather, kind of like those bluebird days that you see. Low pressure is gonna be more unsettled weather. It's gonna have more moisture in it. It's gonna be more seasonably warm. It's also associated with really bad weather. You know, an extreme example of low pressure is a hurricane. Um, they always have right at their center a very low pressure. And uh, another way to think about it is that high pressure is air that's coming from high up in the atmosphere and it's coming down. Think of it as being a little bit more dense and it's pushing everything away, okay? It's coming down and pushing things away. It's very clear and dry and it's bringing in that beautiful weather. Uh, low pressure is kind of coming towards you and then moving up and as it moves up, it becomes even more unsettled and that's why you often get you know, the thunderstorms or the, the big cyclonic uh, weather disturbances. So knowing the difference between high pressure and low pressure and the trend, whether it's moving towards high or moving towards low, is a great overall indicator of the weather. So with that said, I'm gonna pull a barometer off the wall here. And I like to use this one here because it's really got a nice, a nice big dial on it that says, you know, uh, you know, stormy rain change and all those fun things about the weather. So when we're talking about a barometer, for example, here, the pressure is a little over 30 inches today and we're moving into the fair weather area. So higher pressure is over here, lower pressure, the needle will be going this way. Now, the reason that the needle is here, this is like a set point. So for example, if you, I were to have set the needle line, you'd line them up like that. But let's say I had it set like that yesterday. I would know that from yesterday to today, the pressure has increased. So we've got clearing weather. And today's a great example. If you could look outside, it's, a, it's winter, but it's still a very clear, dry day out there. It's higher pressure moving in. Um, another thing that people do when they're reading a barometer, and this is perfectly normal, is you tap it a couple times, just like this. And you can see when I tap it, it kind of makes that needle move a little bit. It's releasing any, because you know, there's a spring inside there as opposed by a vacuum. The barometers don't move a lot sometimes. And they just, if you tap it, it settles it down and it really uh, brings it into the true. It's a nice way of checking to make sure your barometer is working. T typically when you tap it like this, it will move in the direction that the pressure is going. And then once you do that, you simply line the two needles up like that. So that's a nice, easy way to read a barometer. The beauty of a barometer, by the way, especially like some of these aneroid ones or the mercury ones. Uh, yeah, I've got some mercury ones right behind me, and these here tend to be more the aneroid ones. Uh, the beauty of them is that you don't have to wind them, you don't have to put batteries in them, you don't have to plug them, and they just sit on the wall and work. So with all that said, barometers hang on the wall. Another question that people ask me, and they say, well, it's raining and the barometer isn't showing rain. Well. The indications on here are really just general uh, approximations of what the weather could be. And a lot of times you get a passing storm that comes through and maybe a rain cloud. And it, there really isn't much change in uh, the barometric pressure. And sometimes bar barometric pressure changes so little over the course of a week, you know, some, you might think that there's something wrong, but you can always tap it, make sure it's going. Um, another question that people often ask me is, where's the best place to put a barometer? Well, really, since air pressure is the same inside a house as it is outside a house, no house is airtight, uh, maybe something like a submarine is, but no one lives in a submarine, um, you really don't need to have it outside. And that's the beauty of a barometer, is that it can tell what's going on outside while being inside. Um, I simply tell people to really any place where it's nice and visible, some place it won't get bumped or whatever, is a, you know, use common sense where you're placing it. I wouldn't put it like right over like a big heating uh, vent or where the sun is shining on it, but just a nice place where you can appreciate it and just maybe look at it, catch a glimpse of it on your way outside each day and, you know, tap that line with the needle and, uh, you know, see what it does. 
So those are some of the most common questions I get about barometers. Um, if you have anything further, please add them to the comments or give me a call. I'm happy to talk about barometers. I do it every day. Um, so again, Park Madden from The Weather Store in Sandwich, Massachusetts. You can see our website at theweatherstore.com. Thanks again for watching.